Turbulence is directed by Robert Butler. This is an action thriller Christmas horror movie. The film stars Lauren Hawley as flight attendant Terry Halloran, Ray Liotta as Ryan Weaver, Catherine Hicks as Maggie, Brendan Gleeson as Stubbs, Rachel Ticketon as Rachel Taper, Ben Cross as Captain Samuel Bowen, and Hector Elizondo as Lieutenant Aldo Hines. This film is rated R for terror, strong violence, and language. This film is most certainly not for children or teenagers. I would say anyone 18 years of age and older, but no one below that. Turbulence was released in theaters in the United States on Friday, January 10th, 1997. It is Christmas Eve, 1997. At JFK Airport in New York City, New York, Transcontinental Airlines Flight 47 is taking off at 3.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and headed across the country to Los Angeles, California for Christmas in a Boeing 747-200. <laughs> Checklist is complete. Transcon 47 rolling. Power's good. We have four stable engines. It is almost an empty flight carrying 11 passengers, plus the pilot captain, the first officer co-pilot, and four flight attendants. Out of all the passengers on the plane, six of them are special, because four of them are United States Marshals, and the other two, who are men, are prisoners being transferred or transported back to Los Angeles on board this flight. One is a bank robber, and the other is the Lonely Heart Strangler serial killer. The flight takes off and everything is normal for about the first hour and a half of the flight. When flight attendant Terry Halloran is taking drink orders, Ryan Weaver, who is the serial killer, is attracted to her and tries several times to speak to her, but Terry is not realizing that Weaver has his sights set on her. Later on, when Terry is taking their orders for dinner, two of the marshals take the bank robber Stubbs to the bathroom and while he's in there, he breaks chains and starts a shootout with the marshals. The pilot leaves the cockpit and comes downstairs to see what is happening and is shot in the back and killed instantly. Up in the cockpit, the co-pilot requests an emergency landing but is denied because of crossing traffic at lower altitudes. He tries to contact one of the flight attendants to come to the flight deck to tell him what's going on but no one responds. The co-pilot makes sure the autopilot is set and he starts to go downstairs but the plane's nose violently goes up and throws him against the wall, knocking him out cold and he dies of his injuries. Down below, Stubbs kills three of the marshals and holds Terry hostage with his handgun pressed right up against her head. Ryan Weaver gets up and gets out of his handcuffs and tries to settle things down and makes the last marshal drop his gun. Stubbs grabs the marshal's gun and then knocks him out and is going to open the plane's door and throw him out the door while the plane is in motion. Before he can, Ryan Weaver shoots Stubbs and as Stubbs is going down, he pulls the trigger on his gun and shoots the marshal and kills the last marshal. Terry goes up to the cockpit and realizes no one is flying the plane and finds the first officer dead. She leaves the cockpit but then decides to go back. Terry sits down at the controls and as she does, she accidentally hits a switch which gives the plane's location to the people who work at LAX at the Transcon Crisis Management Center. They see it and they know that the plane is having issues and makes the connection that Transcon 47 is trying to communicate with them, so they get a 747-200 instructor pilot from Tower Air named Captain Bowen to help Transcon 47. As they start to piece together what happened from what Terry tells them once Terry establishes communication, they see the problems are only getting worse as the plane is flying right straight into a level 6 thunderstorm. 
Down below, Ryan Weaver puts the passengers and crew members into the crew cabin and locks them in there. Maggie, the senior flight attendant, tries to stop Weaver, and he ends up strangling her and killing her. Up in the cockpit, Terry is trying to pilot and land the plane in a level 6 thunderstorm, all the while trying to stay alive. Weaver starts hunting Terry and playing a type of cat and mouse game, ultimately trying to kill her and everyone else aboard as he intends to let the plane run out of fuel and crash. At one point, Weaver starts a fire on board to lure Terry out of the cockpit and then makes his way to the avionics bay to try and sabotage the plane by taking out the autopilot as she is trying to land the plane at LAX. During one of their struggles, Terry finds one of the backup guns that the marshals had and quickly loads a bullet into it and shoots Ryan Weaver right in the head, right over his left eye, killing him instantly. She goes back up to the cockpit after killing Weaver and with help and instruction from Captain Bowen, successfully lands the plane safely at LAX. Okay, so this is the summary synopsis for the movie. Now, here are my negatives. To be honest, I have nothing negative to say about this film. I did not see or hear any flaws or mistakes in this film, so let's move on to my positives. The story is simple yet strong and easy to follow. The execution of the story is great. It is a combination of a Christmas movie, action movie, and horror movie, and it blends those three things together so good that it's just one hell of a film. The characters are great and built up well, though for this story they don't need a whole lot of background because of what's happening and how the film is set up and what's happening during the film. The actors did a great job with their characters. The acting is top notch and it does not seem forced and it does not seem fake at all. You really feel like the characters are in this scary and intense situation. Lauren Holly is great as flight attendant Terry Halloran, who at first is just working her job as normal until things take a violent and scary turn. She quickly has to get herself together and not only try to fly and land a plane, but she has to do it while flying into a dangerous thunderstorm and evading a sadistic killer on board. And Ray Liotta really turns into his character Ryan Weaver, and he is just a sick, twisted killer who wants to kill Terry and everyone else and crash the plane. Then there's one of my favorite characters of this film, Hector Elizondo, who plays Detective Aldo Hines, who captures Weaver after two years of trying and is pulled into the situation after learning that Weaver has hijacked the plane that is transporting him back to Los Angeles. He has to use everything in his power to try and convince Weaver not to crash the plane. Then there's Ben Cross, who plays Captain Samuel Bowen, who desperately tries to help Terry fly and land the plane and stay alive in the situation that she's currently in. The dialogue is simple and yet easy to follow and understand. The only time it might get confusing is when Captain Bowen is talking Terry through flying and landing the plane. But the way they show it and explain it on screen, it makes it seem like a piece of cake. But... I'm sure it is not that simple in real life trying to fly and land a Boeing 747-200. Can Captain Bowen hear me? I'm with you, Terry. Tell me what to do. Find that arrival switch again. Okay. Push it. I pushed it. Now push the button beside runway seven, right, and then execute. Okay, LAX arrivals up. What next? Find those switches below the glare shield labeled L-NAV and V-NAV. Push them both. Just to the left of those switches is the airspeed control knob. Dial in a speed of 180. Done. Speed brakes armed. Armed. Reduce speed to 156. 156. Okay. All right, Terry. You're locked onto the glide slope. The plane should land itself now. Whatever happens, don't touch the controls. For the film's special effects, they used everything from models, miniatures, great looking matte paintings were used for shots of the sky, some digital CG effects were used as well as green screens, different setups were used when some of the film crew shot actual 747s including shooting a 747 from a Learjet as well as filming the craft from a B-25 bomber. So a lot of different effects and effects combinations were used to give this film as much realism as possible. And to be perfectly honest, you guys, I think this film looks freaking amazing. In fact, I think 
this film's special effects are Oscar worthy. The look of this film is very well done. They used a lighter color scheme with light and more color for the first act, but once it gets into the second and third acts where all the terror, horror, and excitement and adrenaline is, the color scheme shifts to more darker colors like dark blues, dark grays, dark browns, plus the lighting changes, and they don't use as much light, plus at times they use the shadows. The lightning from the storm that lights up the inside of the dark plane while it's flying and there is a killer running loose inside the cabin gives it a very frightening and scary feel. The musical score in this film is lighthearted during the first act, but once the prisoners get free inside the plane and Terry is trying to fly and land the plane, the music gets much more thrilling, action-packed, and spooky. The score is composed and conducted by Shirley Walker, who is mainly known for scoring Batman the Animated Series and Superman the Animated Series. She does awesome work all around and her score for Turbulence is amazing, but all the scores I've heard for Shirley Walker, she knows how to score films and give them the musical cues that they need and that makes the film just bring itself together. The songs, which are mainly Christmas songs used in the film, are great as well. Okay, those are all my positives. Now it's grading time. I'm going to give the film Turbulence an A-. I was going to give this film an A plus at first, but there's one reason I didn't. There's a very violent and disturbing scene in this film where Weaver strangles the senior flight attendant Maggie. The way both actors played that scene, it looked so real and so believable. They both really sold that scene, and every time I watch this movie, I always have to mute the movie during this part and turn my head away because it's just too real looking for me, and it just gives me the creeps. There's one other scene that's a little bit disturbing and scary as well, where Weaver sets up the dead bodies of the captain, the U.S. Marshals, and the other prisoner where it looks like they're all looking at each other. It's just, ooh, very spooky and I, I, don't, I don't really know how to describe it. It's just creepy, I guess is the word I would use. Other than those two scenes, this is a fantastic Christmas action thriller horror movie that you can watch any time of the year, not just during the Christmas season. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to say good night. God bless. I love all of you. And Merry Christmas to you all.